so hello guys and welcome back to today's class um front end with the academy so we're still on html so last week we talked about the introduction to html please mute your mic because of the recording so last week we talked about the introduction to html and we looked at some basic tags as well we looked at the pack the heading tags the paragraph tags the div the list which are ul and ol which stands for another than another list we also looked at comments we look at buttons um href um hr bro um did you talk about hr and bro i'm coming that's the only one where i can check hr we talked about br and hr right yeah yeah we talked no, about no them. yeah we talked about them hr and br we talked about mark you uh, what was it called? Eline elements. So we talked about the uh, bold underline and emphasis. We also talked about video, right? So let's talk about tables and form. I believe these are the two last most important HTML tags we need to know. Let me see. After table and form, we talk about semantic tag attributes. Uh, I think we are good to go, right? So let's talk about table and forms first. Like I said, this we could finish HTML because HTML is not that long, right? And let's continue from the previous class. Why is this thing bringing a panel over here? But okay, let's continue. Now, uh, I'm going to I want to comment them, right? I don't need much text on my web page. So the next on our list will be let's talk about tables first, right? Now, what is HTML table? Now, a table is a way of arranging items in rows and columns. Right, we all know that when we talk about table, we are referring to rule and column arrangement of items. Now, what do I mean by that? In HTML or HTML5, when you hear the word table, two things should go. Um, okay, let me see. When we hear the word table, hmm? you know that you are going to have the table tag, then you have the table head, right? And the table, I'm not sharing my screen, I guess. So, let me share my screen. I'm not sharing my screen. Let me share my screen first. Sorry about that. Mm. So, like I was saying, when we talk about table, uh, these things should come into your mind: table, table head, and uh, table body. Right, but these are not the most important things. Now, um, I don't even use these guys again. This tier and table body, I only make use of table row, table data, and uh, table table head. So, okay, this is what we use. Let me just write it: table row, table head and table data so these guys will come into your mind right when you hear the word table these things will come into your mind now what are these now table rule specifies the rule of the table we are going to have like maybe i need five rules on my table i'm going to put five table rule, which is five tr tag now our tr is created i'll say tr right now take note every table must have a heading that's why i have th now these headings now do not specify the columns we want to have let me say I want to create the table of um, users and their email. I'll say serial number, right? So now I'll create another table head. Uh, table head, I'll say, sorry. How about the table head? I'll say name, right? I'll put on that table head. I'll say email, right? Uh, I think this data is right now. Now let me show you what this will look like on my browser. Now I've already used my live server to open this page. So I'll just locate the link over here. Can you see it? Now, this is what we have on our table. Table, okay. So, let me just put each arrow tag over here. Come here, each arrow. Save. Now, I can see what I'm having. Serial number, name, and email. Now, you can see that these things are bold by default. Now, I need the other table rule, right? Now, instead of this table rule, what do I need? I want to have table data. Now, the first table data will be serial number one, okay? Seems like the guy is in class now. Uh, it's, not, it's not the one. So let's continue. So Daniel, welcome. Yeah. Uh, uh, we're thanks. able to reach out to you. Can you hear me? Uh, I reached out to him. He said he's very occupied right at the moment. But we'll try to join and on the long run. Okay, no problem. So let's just continue. At least the videos are there for him to go through. I don't know yeah. to hear from him to know if he's going uh following along with the video. At least that will mm. be, we know we are on the safe side. But let's right. just continue. All right, thank you very much. 
Now, mm -hmm. um, let me go back to my screen. Now, you can see that this table row make up my first row, right? Which is the rows of the heading. Why is the heading? Because I'm using table head over there. Now, for this table data, these are the contents I want to have. Now, you must make sure that you follow them accordingly. Serial number will follow serial number. The name will follow for names. Let me just see. God bless. Right? Uh, God bless. Another table data. And this table data will have gbrgmail.com. Uh, right? So, if I see, if I see what I'm having, then I can create another table row again. I'll say, okay. On my table data to be uh, serial number two, right? Then I want Freeman, right? Then I also want my email to be Freeman at Gmail. Let me say at company dot com, right? Then I need the last one, the CRO. Um, inside my CRO, I have TD. Sorry. TD and inside this TD, I'm going to have one instance of serial number. Then, uh, I'm sorry, this should be theory instance of serial number. Then, for name, I'm going to have land slot. <laughs> then, now for data, which is for my email, I'm going to have the email of this guy. So, I can say land slot at uk.co. Or can use dot com. Let me just use this right now. These are all emails. Is that also? Now, what makes this an email is the at and the dot. You get now. You are going to see this when we get to form. So, this is a way of creating table. You can see I have a table over here. Now, this table can be styled. There's a there's an attribute in table called border. Hmm? You can see border. So, when I say this was happening, it gives my table a border. Now, by default, the um the table head is centralized by default now what do i mean by centralized if you see it's always at the center of the column it's sitting at the center of the column let me increase the screen sorry not that let me increase the screen i see the table head is always sitting at the center of the column right so i can set the table body to do something like that but if i want to do that i need css so i can either go to my head rather the head of <laughs> i can either go to the head tag then I set the style, right? Then inside my style, I target table. Um, okay. If I target table root, we still do it. But let me just target table data. I say text align center, right? So when I say, can you see what's happening? They are now at the center of the table. You get. So that's for that. I can decide to give manual border and padding and all of this stuff. So I don't want to go into styling of the table. Let's just leave it that way. So that's how to create a table. Now let me recap. If you want to create a table, you go with the table tag first, right? Then inside mm -hmm. of the table tag, you start having things like table row and table data. You get table row, table head, and table data. So your table head specifies the head of each column. You know each column will have a heading to specify what that column is holding. And so just so, just so. So if I want something like a score or um, I'm creating a database for users' information. You still follow the same process. You get our tables could be in different formats. So as time goes on, we'll see how to apply tables to our website. So that's the table. So let's talk about forms. Right? So what are forms? Now forms are used to take users' inputs um so that they can be submitted to a database. Now you know that when you are building your form, you don't just want the beauty. So yeah. When you are building your website rather you don't just want the beauty you want beauty and functionality right for instance now if i come to this website sunisup.com i like the beauty of this website but then i don't just want the beauty i want users to be able to register so um what's wrong <laughs> um network is pretty bad it's still loading the network is but let me look for something that is on my locals nft let's say locals uh point slash nft okay let's just see something that is on my locals that will be fast <laughs> okay the server for this is not running i'm going let me start the server uh so start this studies as well 
So like I was saying, I don't want to use the, um, the website to just have this beauty. I want it to be functional as well. As you can see, with these forms, I can collect the user's information. Yes, I can log in to this um, website. I can create an account as well. Not just creating an account because if you create a website and you create an account the first time of visiting that website, the next time you are coming, you are creating an account again. It means it's not functional. So you want your website to be functional so that when I create an account for my first time of visiting the website, when I'm coming back again, I don't want to create another account. I want to be able to retrieve my previous information. That's the essence of logging into an application. You get so that's just what we want. You get we want the site to be both beautiful and functional. Let me just close this. Close this, right? Now let's go back. So how do you create um how do you create forms? Now it is important to know that there are some data associated with form. Now, in order for you to create a form, first of all, we need the form tag, right? Now, after the form tag, we need uh, what we call the input and the label. Sorry, guys. Input and label, right? Now, what is this input and label doing? The input um, specifies what we want to type or the kind of data we want to send. Then the label is just... Um, Descri it's just a description of what the input should be. So, well, with that much, let's just um, demonstrate it. If I see label, <coughs> right, I can see um, name, then also, <coughs> now I see input, right, and now the type is text by default. So, if I, when I see this, you can see what I'm getting. I can type inside of this, but now that's not what I want to you know. I want to add two B arrows, and then um, each arrow. Okay, good. That's what I'm getting. Now let me just see H1. Let me call it user form. So let me save. Now that's what I'm getting. Now I have the name feed. Um telling me to put this. Now I can come here. I can see ini. Right? So I'll see libe. <laughs> uh this type is quite chest. So I'll see libe. I'll see ini. Right? And now I'll come down here, I'll say input, and I'll say column email. So it's a short way of saying input of type email. You get so let me just do the same for the first one. I'll say input column text because of the extra information that are coming. Input column text, right? So let's leave it that way. Um, come down again, I'll say label for password. Um, this should be my password, right? And I want the input column password. So password is one of the data types. So I'm going to demonstrate this. Now let me save and let's demo this. Now the input of type text, what does that mean? It means you want to take text values. So I can decide to type alpha numeric value. I can type numbers as well, right? Then that's for that. Then for input of type email, it means I will type then my email must contain as and something dot something. I don't know if you get my point. This is a valid email. There's all called regular expressions in JavaScript. Later on, we use it to validate email. But then what validates an email is the at symbol and the dot symbol. You get because this thing is coming from a server. You need your mail server. That's why we need something.com. So Gmail has its mail server, your custom has its mail server, and so on and so forth. So you've been to some website. Here you see admin at the website.com or info at the website.com. So those are you know um hosting server. So uh, let's we we'll see more of that when we get to deployment and more of this later. So, what about the password? Password field contains hidden field. When I try to type, my password will not be visible. Now, this is for this is for security reasons. I don't want this to show everybody when I'm typing my password. Anybody that is there should just know what I'm typing. No, I want to make that feel a hidden field, right? So, please take note, it's very sensitive. So, um let me do a BR over here. This is because forms are inline. Uh, sorry, input and label, they are inline by default. So let me do a BR, BR, right? So I'm going to copy these BROs and put this guy over here. Just in case I need other field, which I do. Now, um, so you've seen this theory in action. But now, you can see other attributes. Now, what's the mean of these attributes? Let me just explain this before going further. Now, this attribute of for and id, they are very, very important. Now, 
Not that it's very important that you can't do away with it or that sorry. Not that it's very important to the point that we can't omit it. No, you can omit it, but it's important. Let me just tell you the use. Now, if you look at my name, which is the label and this box, there's no connectivity between them. When I click on this thing, it's just like I'm clicking on the zone. You get there's no connectivity. Now, how do you connect them? They are being connected by using the for and the ID attribute. If I did, if I say this should be for name, hmm? and I say the ID should be name as well. So there's now a connectivity. Now, when I click on this name, the input will be on focus. Can you see what is happening? When I click on the name, the input will be on focus. But look at the image now. When I click on it, the input of that image is not on focus, right? For it, for me to make it um, to be on focus, I need to come here and add image, right? So it must not be email. You can use anything of your choice, but then you need to make it descriptive. So I say email, email, right? So when I do that, I can now come and when I click on this, you can see that they are now being connected. So the same thing I would do for password if I want them to be connected is just to say password. Um, then I'll come down again and say password. So when I see, come down here, reload. That's what I'm getting. So that's for that. So that's the connectivity. But now I made mention I said that there are other data types. So now what are the other data types? Now we've only see text, email, and password, right? What if I want to enter age? So there's all called type of number, right? So if I duplicate this, I'll do something like um age. So let me just put this one under. Let me put a comment. I'll say other form data types, right? Um so I need um let me change this to age. We get um change this to age. Uh, I'm sorry, control Z, control Z, so each coming. So let me change this guy to each, E G E. When I save, now you can see that the feed is still password, but I don't want it to be password. So the type specifies what will be inside of that place. So I'll change this to type of number. You get because I want my age to be a number. So when I come here, anything I type will not enter except is a numeric value. You get so I can, have, I can also increase by using this. Then I can decrease by using this. You get so this is a numeric value. So that's for that. Then let's talk about um so this four attribute I can decide to omit it. For now, let me just remove that. Um I don't need the uh, four and the ID because I've already explained what I want to use, um explain with it. So just um explain the other data types, right? So let me say I want something like a favorite color. Hmm? Now, how do you get a color feed? So, let me just do something like favorite color. F E V C O L O R. But if I continue, let me be sure that you are with me. I want to be sure you are with me. Okay. Now, this color, I can have a type of color. Like, right? I come here, change my type to color. Uh, see, can you see what's happening? It's giving me a color picker, so I cannot come here, choose any color of my choice. You get so the color value will be selected. So if I submit, you see the color value. Uh, please meet your mic so that uh, the video can go away. So that's what the input of type color is doing. Then now I cannot do something again. There's also another input, so that's input of type phi. So if I come back here, I can see. P, I can see profile picture, right? Now I can change it to input of type file. When I see if that's what I'm getting, I can choose a file. If you open up my laptop, then I'll choose any file of my choice. Click OK. It can be image, it can be PDF. Can you see it? That's what the input of file um, does. Then what again, what again? There's input of, um, there's input of um dates let me take a date so there's date time date, but i will leave all those ones you get now what does this do i can put something like uh label now say birthday so i don't want to demonstrate the idea for again because you already know what it is i'm just you know i want to be fast so birthday when i choose click on this it will give me a calendar i'll choose any date of my choice right 
Then now, what is this name attribute used for? The name attribute is used if I want to grab these values and submit them using a scripting language, either PHP, Python, or JavaScript. You get. Now, if I'm using JavaScript, I can decide to use ID and leave name, or I can decide to use name and leave ID, any of them. If I'm using Python or PHP, the name is very important. That's what I will use because when I submit it, it will add a query based on that name feed then to grab the value. When we get to that part, we understand it. But just know that that's what the name is used for to submit to um, a kind of server or backend. You get. Okay, now when I wrote the form, I have an action attribute, right? Action attribute of the form specifies where the form will be submitted to. Are you following? So, take where the form will be submitted to. So, I can do something like. Um, um login.php so that when I submit it, it take me to login page. So that's just for that. Anything of a choice. Right? So there are still more of this feed, but let me do something. I can put a button. When I say button, I'll say submit. So when I say I'll get a button, but let me put a B arrow. Right? And another B arrow. Now when a button is inside the form, the default behavior of the button is to submit the form. Are you following me? When the button is inside the form, the default behavior of the button is to submit the form. Now what will happen? When I click on this, it will be submitted and thereby to reload the page. That's why it's taking me up again. So if I go down, click on it, it will be submitted and take me up. And now, I can decide to use button. I can also decide to use an input of type submit. I'll say input colon submit right so if i do this um i need to give a value if you see the button is here but there's no text you get see the button over here but there's no text so let me just highlight it this is the button yeah so now the value could be anything so i can say submit uh submit when i say find what i'm getting see that's what the value or anything like that i can say submit form i'm oh, sorry what's this I say submit form, right? So that's what it will give me when I submit to reload the page. Now, there are also other type of inputs such as the radio and checkbox. So let me just leave the button because I will come back to it. Now, if I say input, uh, input column radio, now what does input column radio do? Uh, what is it doing? Input column radio is used to um take between choices let me say i need religion i can do something like this um i will say labor i'll say religion i'll say the first one for christian so i guess what is happening so i can put a br over here and then i don't need this br call this guy put it here right so i can do something like on that libe I'll say Christian. Right? Then I'll do something like uh, Libya. I'll say Muslim. When I say, find what I'm getting. That's what that guy is used for. You get. So I can choose. Um, and now I'm, I'm able to pick two at once. Um, but there's a way I will write it. I'll be able to select only one at a time. I think that's when I give a name attribute. Let me see. Uh, do I still remember this thing? So this is my radio, right? Label for hmm. bombing. Let me see. Let me see name. Huh? Go to religion, right? Then if I see name again, you go to religion. Huh? Then I see this is for religion. So let's see religion. So if I redo this, okay, it is really. So if I select this. I can select this. You can see that I can only select one at a time. And you see, so that's what that one is doing. The other, this Christian and Muslim, these are just a uh, little to display. But what I'm looking at is this main one that I see religion. So I'm connecting it to this other two by using the the name attributes. The name attributes is not what I want to use. Let me use the ID attribute. Let me see. Um, I want to let me try the ID, ID attributes. Control C. Uh, Control V. Uh, Control C. Control V and uh, let me just do this. Let me use the ID attribute. Let me see if it will work. So you can see if I click on this, okay. It, I think it's the name attribute that will work for this. Can you see what is happening? So the name attribute is what I can use for this.
So this is what is doing. I don't need to make use of the ID attribute. Is the name attribute. So also this imputes that are here. Huh? This first. Uh, if you notice, I'm having three imputes, which are this first one, the general one, then the one for Christian and the one for Muslim. You get. I can decide to remove this and change it to span, right? I can change it to span. It will still work. This is because. Those inputs are not doing anything, they are just description. I guess description of data, radio feed. So the main one is this first one, which has four religion and name of religion. So yeah, it's not the idea that is actually working with the um, name attribute. So uh, let me just demo it one more time. Click on select. So this is when I want to select a single value out of a range of options, something like a CBT question or religion or you know, male or female, something like that. Then now there's all called the checkbox. Mm -hmm. Checkbox is similar to radio, but checkbox is this when I have multiple options to pick from, right? Uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to copy this. I'll just duplicate this guy. That will make use of it. So, just to come here, change this to checkbox. Uh, type of radio. I'll change this radio to checkbox, right? Change this to checkbox. Uh, now if I save, can you see how checkbox is? Checkbox, even if I add name attribute, I can select all of them at a time. You get because checkbox is used to select multiple values. Let me say I want um, courses offered. Let me say courses. Um, courses uh, offered. Let me say I'm filling a form. Now I want to register different course. I can see uh, this should be for maths. Um, this should be for English. <laughs> right? Uh, this should be for coding. Let me just put one more. I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, I don't need this. Be arrow. I don't need this. So if I save, you can see I have math, I have uh, English, I have coding. Right? I have yes. I have coding. I have music. Right. So now let me say I want to pick three out of this. Um, I can say math, coding, and English. Right. So I will leave music out of it. So this is when I want to select multiple options. Let me check if you are still with me. <laughs> so I don't want this to go up again. Okay, great. We are together. Now, uh, if I go back to my Web page. So that's for that. If you notice, we've looked at how many of these data type now. Um, text, email, password, number, color, file for images or any of the files. This, um, radio, checkbox. Now there's all called a select an option. So select an option can also be used for selecting between the various options. So I can come back here. I can see something like select, right? Now I can do something like um, sorry, label first. I'll see label. I'll see uh. Let me see. Um, uh, let me see gender. So let me just do something like this. Gender. Now inside of this gender, I can I put my select, right? So if I comment the select, you notice that that will be out of there. Now let me go to Z, but I'll put the B arrow. Another B arrow, right? So inside of the gender, so select, I have various options, right? So the option will be for me, right? Uh, let me see female. <laughs> female. So there's a gender that's um, both male and female. I think uh, hermaphrodite. Let me just see. Or let me just see mixed. Yeah. Right? Those but uh <laughs> let me just say it. So if I see uh if I open this, can I see what I'm having? So this is the select and what's it called? Select an option feed. So I can choose female, female will be there. But now, these are just front end. The main thing that is determining what we are selecting is this value. So I have to put a value of me, value of me, value of uh, mix there. That, but that would be when I want to submit to a database or back end stuff. You get so I'm taking note of that so that the right data will be submitted. Now, uh, I want to talk about submitting a form and um, small form validation. I will say form validation. What do we mean? I don't want anybody to just come and submit an empty form. As you can see, this form is being submitted. So there's supposed to be a way I will be able to validate my form. Again, maybe the user must put in something 
all the passwords must be less than um, must be greater than eight or something like it should not just be that you just come and submit anything you get that some fees that are required remember that some forms you feel you see asterisk means that fee is required but now um if you want to do all of those fancy stuff everybody you see red something will come up uh let me just demo i don't know why is this website not opening so it needs up i want to i wanted you guys to see what i'm talking about before hmm? so uh network is really really bad uh, okay let me test the nft uh, uh let me just use this one to test now if you notice if i don't put anything here eh, and i want to submit can you see what's happening it's telling me that i must enter my email i must enter my password right so something like that is what we call validation you get now since we are still in html html5 has some validation so yeah uh, uh, I can put the required attribute. That would be a little bit of validation for me. Now, if I see, remember, I said when the form is inside the when the button is inside the form, the default behavior of the button is to submit the form. So, if I click on this, it won't submit. It will tell me to please fill out this field. Why? Because I'm doing some validation by adding this required attribute. You get. So this one will call it only. Now, maybe you want to update um, part of your. You want to do update um stop maybe update your profile but you don't want the setting fee to be updated maybe the email you get maybe you can just put something like read only so that in case there's a value before now if i add a value to this and i see uh, and i see hello at yahoo.com now that will be the value there now i don't want, if i don't want to be able to change this eh, there's something i can do i can put a read only attribute where is it uh, I can put a read only attribute. So I'll say read only. So if I save this, I see I can't change this. I can't delete. I can't add to it. You get. So that's what the read only attribute is doing. Uh, but we're not going to be using it much. So let's just stick with required, right? So if, for instance, I'm using my required now, um, let's just remove this value. We don't need this value. Now, if I'm using my required, eh, and I try to submit, you tell me to please fill out the name. Now, if I fill out the name. Try to submit again to tell me to please fill out this feed. Now, if I fill out this feed and I try to submit, it will tell me to you get this email feed is doing some validation. It's saying please include an at symbol in the email address. So it needs an at to be a valid email. Now, if I try to submit again, it will tell me to please enter a part of the following at and dot. That is to say, every email needs at something dot something. You get so if I say at this, then I say dot this. And I try to submit now. You see that it's working. You get so required. Um, you know what the required field is doing. If I want this one to be required, I can just put the required attribute there. So that when you want to fill it, you must fill in that field. So that's what the required is doing. So I think this is pretty much everything about form. Uh do it much, but you have to, you know, digest it, watch videos, read from the Bluetooth schools. You get now the thing is this not all of this you are going to be using. When you are working in most cases you are not going to be using all of them but then um these things are kind of the most important ones you require the attribute the name the id and all of those stuff so please i know it's much but just try to you know take it in you get so is there any question before we proceed uh let me go back is there any question before we proceed no question so you understand all what we've been doing yes okay uh yes okay so that's great that's great oh so i think we can go back to semantic tag and attribute so that on our next class we can start doing some styling on this year because there's still time this is just 808 i'm supposed to you know i'm supposed to do t9 but then um <laughs> where i am i need to you know get on by it because i don't we didn't there's no light i just went out to use some other place just to make sure the class will do it yes all right it's having kind of an issue yeah. but then the class must hold it must hold whether we like it or not <laughs> so that's just it i disappoint yeah. Yes. yeah but then let's just see there's still time from that to 8 30 still far but after that 8 30 we can start doing question and answer our phone by then i'll be going home so we can be doing question and answer our phone but let's see so there's still something we can yeah. do um are you with me Pascal, you yes, um, okay. Yes. Mr. Dada, you want to say something? No, not really. You can just carry on. Okay. And the life is going to end. The meeting is going to end soon. Uh, is that what they say? 
Yeah, mm-hmm. in six minutes. Uh, I thought they said the uh, what's it called? I thought they said the uh, Google Meet now lasts more than one hour. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. I'm actually on premium. Okay, you're on mm-hmm. premium. Oh, okay. But nevertheless, I let's just continue. If it ends, we are going to create another link and uh, continue. Yeah. So that's what that. So now that's that about form. We've learned a lot. So let's talk about uh let's talk about um semantic tag, right? So this topic is very short. Now remember that they will talk about block level elements and inline elements. So now, what are these semantic tag? Now, semantic tag are block level elements. Now, let me just go back to my uh, uh, slide. So let me just close all of this. Uh, let's make don't see. So let's make use of more. Now, if I open this slide, I want to show you guys something. Uh, uh, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. So. Now, we talk about block level elements and inline the other day. We say block level elements, these elements form their paragraph. And they take the width of the browser. Why inline they only take the width of its content and so on and so forth. Now, HTML5 semantic tag are examples of block elements. Now, I said something the other day. Each version of HTML has a unique property they introduce because the purpose of every programming language or anything is such that over time it can be improved on or worked upon. You get now HTML4 introduces what they call div, right? So when they say div now, uh, it makes it easier so that I can create different sections of layout. So if I come down and show you this image now, uh, not this one. Now, if you look at this, I can have a header, a nav, a section, article. But in HTML4, if I want to create this, I'll use only div to create all of this, and I'll start giving uh, what's it called? I'll start giving ID or class to style them separately. But HTML5 introduces what we call semantic tag. And semantic tag gives special meaning to our web page, right? Now, when I say special meaning, does that mean I cannot use another thing? Yes, you can use another thing. But then, if I'm making use of a semantic tag, it makes it easier in such a way that you don't need to start giving classes. You just know that, okay, this is your header. It's giving a description of the website. So now, I can have header tag as a semantic tag, nav tag, session tag, aside, main footer. Now, we're not going to be writing code on this. We we'll use this semantic tag when we want to build a project. But let me just show you um, different websites. Uh, let me go back to Google. Let me increase this. Now, let's go to popular websites. You know, if I go to jumia.com, sorry, jumia.ng, I go to amazon.com. Right? Uh, I'm sorry, let me just click on this. Uh, Amazon, click on this. Uh, let me go to what's it called? Uh, let me go to nigerloaded.com. <laughs> I don't know why I like using this website to give examples. Maybe it was because when I started learning uh, web dev with WordPress, then when I tried to build a bloggy website, it was the example I used. So maybe that's why I liked it that much. But then let's, let's observe this website now. Now, if you look at this website, eh, at the top, you see a nav bar, right? Now, what is the Nava? Nava gives navigation. When we say navigation, we mean direction. If I want to go to account, I will come here. I will say everything about my account. If I need app, I will come here. You know, you need cards. You get. Then it also has the header. Header is like the main section of your website. Whereby um, you display important products you sell on your website. So if I come here, I can switch between these images. That is my header. It also have two sidebars. Uh, I can call this one a sidebar. On that side, but or I can call this middle part a mean, the left side and a side, the other one and a side, then two divs inside the side or two sections. You get if I scroll down, I will see lots of divs. So these are these, but this whole card is a section. Um, oh, I'm already video, I can't draw on this, but this whole card is a section. This white card, let me just see uh, if I can. Can I see this place? My arrow is moving on this white card as a whole. Is a, is a section. Then now this under section. Um, this under section. This under section that has two columns. Uh, this under section with three columns. So that's just it. That's just it. Then you see your footer. If you scroll down, you see the footer, right? You get to account also scroll up, right? So that's what that. Then if you come to Amazon, Amazon website, 
you see your nav bar, you see your header, which talks about the main thing the website is um, selling. Mm -hmm. And you see different cards as sections. These are sections, 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 or this. On that section, on that section, then you scroll down, you see your footer, right? So different websites with our um different websites and their um uh, arrangements. Okay, so let me go to this uh this still okay good. Now if you look at this website, you see a banner upstairs. This banner is for advertisement, right? Now you see the header before the nav bar, right? Then you see a section upstairs for advert. Then you see the main and the aside. Now where is the main? This part is the main, right? The big part. Why the small part is the aside? If you scroll down, you see your footer, right? Uh -huh. Now let me give a website that will portray the real example. So if I come to gbmedia.netify.app, so let me show you something over here. So semantic tag again. This part is my header. The first part that has this white um, background is my header. Then you see this, um, is it gray or ash background? This one that has the development, design, SEO, giveaway, support, contributors. That's my navigation bar, right? Then now this is a whole section. And this section has two columns. Whereby this big part is the main and the smaller part is the aside. So you get, then I have different um, boxes or different sections inside of the main and aside. Then if I come down, I will see my footer. So these are done with semantic element, uh, semantic tag, right? Because they give special meaning to the web page. Now styling this on my CSS will not be difficult because I don't need to give a class. Um, it's in then. So like I said, these tags make it so that we don't need to stress ourselves and start using the and giving class names. You get. So with semantic tag, I just know that I need the name of the semantic tag and to give special meaning and I'll place it where it's supposed to be. Right, so when we do we don't see screen. Yeah, okay. Let me show you. When we do a project, we are going to be using this semantic tag to um uh, do our project so that you understand it better. So there's no need of writing semantic tags code. Uh I will link a page for you so that you go and study it. Uh so when we're doing a project, we we'll use this. I'll see HTML five semantic tag W T V school. So there are, there, are, there are lots of them. You see header, footer, main, aside. You get so, uh, like I said, these are block level elements. Get cool. So my first semantic tag. Can you see? So I have the article, aside, details, fee capture, figure, footer, header, main, mark, nav, section, summary. So these things are very, very important. So just go through them. This is the image I was showing you. Like if you look now, they said it gives special uh, meaning to the browser on uh, developer and so on and so forth. So just go through it, right? So that's for that. Then now let's talk about attributes. Um, attributes is supposed to propel us into CSS. But uh, let's see. Um, next tomorrow, if we talk about attributes, we can actually from okay. Um, I will leave you now. I don't want to bore you with many things. I want you to go home and digest all of this. We'll talk about attributes. We've already started talking about attributes. You can let me just show you examples of attributes. Now, if I open my VS code, attributes give special meaning and information to our web page. So it's our HTML tags, right? Now, when I say special meaning and information, if you look at this um, anchor tag, can you see my screen? Huh? Hope you can see my screen. Uh, Mr. Pascal. No, I can't. Oh, okay. Let me share. Now, like I said, uh, I'm sharing already, but let me share again. Uh, now, like I said, attributes give special meaning and information mm -hmm. to our website. Yeah, yeah, it's sharing now. Now, what are the special meaning? If you look at this issue, this anchor tag, without this issue, it won't work. It's like it won't serve the main purpose. Is that also? So that HF is an attribute that talks about where the link is going to hyper reference or H R E F. Then now uh, this image as well, this source and auth, those are attributes. They give special meaning. The source, if the source is not there, the image cannot come up. The auth, like I said, is an alternative text that will show just in case my image doesn't show up. So that is the attribute for you. Then when we are doing the form, we made use of attributes, things like okay, even the table, we made use of the border attributes, right? I can specify the border with maybe I can say two or three or anything of my choice, but let's not um, go into that part. Now, over here, four is an attribute. 
type is an attribute, name, ID required. So anything that is added to the opening tag of your HTML element is an attribute because they are they tend to give special meaning and information to the tag. Are you following? Me? So that's for that, guys. Yeah. Um, for the next class, we are going to. In our next class, we are going to look at uh, what is it called? Um, let me see. We are going to look at attributes properly. Then we will talk about. Okay, okay, okay. So we will talk about attributes that are mandatory. Right, so say the compulsory ones and the ones that are, that are optional. You get if you look at um source attributes of an image, you know that that's compulsory, right? <laughs> but if you look at the alt attributes, it's really not compulsory. You can decide to use it or not. Because without it or not, your image will still show. But it's just there as a backup in case your image does not show up. Then also the width attribute is also optional. Then for links, the HF attribute is compulsory. You get so those are the things we'll talk about on the next class. Then we'll start going to um class and ID is attributes. An attribute. You said be a line break. No, no, BR yeah. is a tag, it's not an attribute. That's the tag on its own. You get it's a self closing tag. If I let people tell you something, there are a lot of things here, like that's why I need to um, read. You get it's not just by teaching. If you look, that if when I was writing the BRO, can you see what's happening? This is not opening and closing, these are two different BROs. You get BRO tag as self closing tag. If you look now, it has um, a self closing, um, I don't want to say self closing, self closing slash. Also, the HRO, these are self closing tags. You get now, even my input is a self closing tag. Can you see it? Input, yeah, that's yes. slash before the you get, but the label is not a self closing tag. Um, so that's what that. So when you go through them, you see them. But the thing about VS Code, one thing I like about VS Code is that the text editor already knows how these things are working. So if I um, type the name of the tag, press enter, it will just bring how it's supposed to be like a shortcut for it. So that's what that. So on the next class, we look at these compulsory ones and the ones that are not compulsory, or the ones that are optional. Then we'll do more of the codings and so on and so forth. Then we'll start going into CSS, inline CSS. Then we'll go to internal before we go to external. So thank you very much, guys, for joining in. I really appreciate your time and your patience with me, even when my network kept going off. <laughs> so is there any question before we go? Any further questions? No question. Okay, um, and again, for your assignment, like I said, I saw your assignment, you did a great job. So keep it up. If you continue like this, trust me, you'll be very good at it. So I'm still going to be sending my assignment. You get so I want you to be reading ahead of the class, right? So, um, thanks very much again for joining, Mr. De Mr. Daniel. Is there any other is there any comment from you? Mr. Daniel, any comment? Um, is you got the, um, I hear me. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Let me stop the recording. Yeah, okay. can you hear me?